Okay, here we are. Uh, we're doing the Shure MV88 Plus video kit. That's the only time I'll say that for this video. Otherwise, it'll be the MV88. Um, there is actually an MV88. I'm not talking about that microphone. I actually am talking about the MV88 Plus vid video kit. It's just a mouthful. And so <clears throat> the uh, MV88, uh, we did an outdoor test and outdoors is really the natural habitat for this microphone. It was made for the iPhone doing uh, video vlogging uh, from the iPhone. It's very good at that. You can hear what it sounds like in really bad conditions, really windy conditions. Uh, and uh, we, we did about 14 minutes uh, on that. We are in studio now. So this gives you the other side of the equation. Uh, this microphone is not just intended for outdoor use. It's also intended to be brought inside, used in a studio, used with a, a nice computer, mic stand. So uh, we are in studio and I want you to hear what it can sound like at its fullest. So we talked about a lot of things to do with audio in our test uh, outdoor test, and we're going to continue that theme. We're going to talk more about audio in general. And today I want to focus on post-processing. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to do post-processing. I might, I might do uh, an actual video uh, to kind of help with that. But I want to talk about post-processing in general, because here's the thing. Whenever you watch YouTube videos, and I watch a lot of YouTube videos, when you watch microviews, I watch a lot of microviews. What the people will give you are reviews uh, using uh, the microphone, and they will tell you there is absolutely no post processing. This is just what it sounds like coming out of the microphone. We may have boosted it, uh, boosted the gain in post so that the volume is, is loud enough. But otherwise, we didn't do anything else. And that's kind of their boast. That's, um, it's, it's a badge of honor, almost, for them. Well, I, I don't actually consider it a badge of honor. Now, to be clear, uh, the people who are doing mic reviews this way are not doing it wrong. I'm not suggesting that. All right. I, I think that they're only giving you half of the equation, though. And so one of the reasons I don't bother with giving... Uh, unprocessed audio samples is because the internet, YouTube, is full of unprocessed audio samples. It's all unprocessed audio samples, all of, all of the reviews. What they don't give you is an idea of what the microphone, what the audio will sound like from that microphone when it is completely processed. Because here's the thing. When you use the microphone to record your podcast or your stream, you are going to process it to within an inch of its life because you want it to sound as good as it can possibly sound. And that's why you post-process. Nobody uses a microphone raw. So if they're giving that to you, that gives you an idea of the starting point but it doesn't give you the idea of the end point for that mic. You don't know how good that mic can sound when it's doing a real project. And so for that, you have to uh, look to people who, who do podcast things other than mic reviews so that you can hear how the mic will actually sound at the end of the day when you're done with your project and when you've published it for your listeners. Just real quick, sorry about some of the plosives I'm hearing. Uh, that is just poor mic technique on my part. I've actually got an additional uh, wind screen that I put on the microphone to help control for plosives, so I, I double filter. Uh, and I'm not using that double filter right now. Uh, you don't really need it with this mic. You just need good uh, mic technique because it is a condenser mic and I am playing it close to the mouth. And with the double filtering, it just allows me to be a lot lazier. So when I'm not double filtering, I still end up 
being a little bit lazy <laughs> with my uh, mic technique. So apologies uh, for that, and I'll try to do a better job at controlling those loud P sounds. Okay, uh, back to the, um, the talk about post-processing. <laughs> we, obviously, we're going to get a lot of P's when we talk about post-processing. Okay, some people feel like, I get the sense that some people feel like doing post-processing would be cheating, that they're not giving you the real sound of the microphone if, if they do post-processing, and they don't want to uh, be caught cheating, or you know, if they are doing a mic review and the mic was given to them by the company that makes the mic or maybe a store that sells the mic, people are going to think, ah, well, you're just trying to do things to, to make the mic look better than it is because you're a shill. And so I understand the desire to try to look as fair as possible, but I actually believe that you're doing the microphone a disservice when you don't post-process and when you don't try to make it look as good as you possibly can. So first of all, before getting too deep into post-processing, here's the benefit of a raw signal. A raw signal kind of tells you how far you need to travel from what the mic naturally does to the end result that you want. Everyone excuse me, everyone has an end result, a sound that they have in mind when they talk into a mic. And it could be uh, Leo Laporte, it could be Joe Rogan, uh, could be Rush Limbaugh, whatever, whatever the sound is, uh, could be a television uh, personality or a television show. You have an idea of what the sound is should sound like or what you want the sound to sound like. When you hear the raw signal from the mic, you get a sense, a sense, not a, not a completely accurate sense, mind you, but a little bit of a sense of the distance you have to go from where you're going to start to where you want to end. And it could be that the distance is just too far. Someone with a lot of uh, equipment and software and skill might be able to pull it off. They might be able to take a really, really terrible microphone and get to the kind of sound that they ultimately want. It's also possible that your, your sound goal isn't that high. And so it could be that a low-end microphone gets you there pretty easily because you're, you're not trying to take it that far anyway. So hearing the raw signal definitely has its benefits. But let me explain why it's not cheating to hear the processed signal. I'm going to use an analogy. I've thought about this analogy a lot. I know where the bodies are buried. All analogies break down at some point, and this one breaks down too. So you don't need to write in the comments about where this analogy breaks down. Uh, I get it. I've probably thought about it. I mean, you can if you want to. It's okay. Um, but I use the analogy partly because it's it's just very illustrative. And also, I can't think of one that's better. <laughs> so if you can think of a better one, uh, definitely uh, leave that in the comments. The next time I talk about it, uh, I will use your analogy uh, instead of the one that you're about to hear. So uh, I think about a painter. Uh, now, I used to live with a painter, and so I know what painting looks like. I know what paint supplies uh, are and uh, paint supply stores. I, I get it. I don't know how to paint, and I don't really understand it. And so the analogy might just break down because I've said something bogus about painting. But try to be a little bit forgiving and, and hear the intent behind uh, the analogy. And I think that it will help make post-processing a lot clearer for you. So think about 
the canvas as the microphone. And then your painting as the post-processing that you do with the audio. Um, so let's, let's look at some of the components. Uh, the canvas. What is, what is a canvas? Well, it can be a lot of things. It could be an animal skin. It could be paper. Uh, you know, maybe leaves. It can, be, it can be any number of things. There are all kinds of different types of canvases. Some of them are really thin and cheap and you know, not very good. They don't take the, the paint very well. Uh, some of them are, are nice and thick and full. Some are smooth. Some are knobby. Uh, some are pure white to, to the degree that there's such thing as pure white. Some, some are pure white and, uh, and some are off white and some may not be white at all. Uh, they may be different colors altogether. So you have a broad range of canvases starting with the really inexpensive to the really expensive, uh, canvases. And we can, kind of understand the differences between those canvases. Canvases are things that you can look at. They're very tactile. Uh, and so you can, you can begin to see why the really expensive canvases cost so much money and why the cheap canvases are so cheap. So uh, that's the canvas. That's the microphone. All right. So the actual image that you come up with, that's the content. So we could even imagine a canvas with a starter picture on it. So let's say uh, what you want is a picture of a sky with some clouds, maybe some birds, uh, a hot air balloon off in the distance. Uh, then there's a farmhouse and some trees and then there's grass and maybe uh, a little lake. So that's, that's the content that you want to make. And maybe you buy a canvas that has that partially filled in. So maybe it has, uh, the hint of a sky, you know, some, some blue, you know, very lightly, colored um, sky blue toward the top of the image and you know maybe it's there's a gradient and at the bottom of the page there's another patch of blue where your lake might go but there's also some green where grass might go and it's fairly undefined and then maybe there's some brown and red is kind of the outline of a barn uh, in the middle and so you can buy that canvas so that's, that's your audio. So the canvas is your microphone. The initial picture is your audio. But you're not ready to sell that audio. You're not ready to frame that audio. No, you've got you've to go to work on it now. Now you've got to take that audio and do something amazing with it. You've got to take that starter picture and do something amazing with it. So let's choose the right Paints, because there are different kinds of paints, aren't there? There's watercolors and oils, just, to, just as an example. And then you've got different kinds of colors. So maybe you want a blue sky, but that doesn't tell you much. What shade of blue, what kind of blue do you want? Uh, there's a difference between maybe cheap paints and really good paints. <laughs> uh, and there's certainly a difference in the skill of the painter as you put it on the canvas. So even though you've got a starter image, now you're going to go to work on that image and you're really going to fill it in and you're going to put a lot of puffy little clouds in there and maybe some birds in there that wasn't in the starter image at all. And, uh, and then you really fill out that barn and uh, a lot of detail there and then the grass and you put some happy little trees, um, Bob Ross style uh, in there. And then you add in reflections in, in your lake. Uh, before you know it, you've got a real work of art that is your signature. That's post-processing. So you started with a canvas, the microphone, and you chose the quality that, that you wanted because you know where you want to end up. 
may have been something cheap, may have been something expensive. And then you got a starter image because you kind of know the image that you want. There's your, there's your audio. And then you apply your signature to that, your signature strokes, your signature colors, um, the things that transform an image from a picture into art. That's what you're doing when you paint. And that's what you're doing with post-processing. So we start with a microphone, could be cheap, could be expensive. There are very big differences between cheap microphones and expensive microphones, as a general rule. Uh, you kind of do get what you pay for, kind of, sort of, most of the time. Um, and then you lay down your audio. I'm talking to you right now. You're not going to hear how this sounded before I post-processed it because it doesn't matter. Um, that's, that's the image. Anybody can put down the, the starter image. What makes it sound good to your ear is what I did after that. And it's me taking advantage of the strengths of the microphone, of the characteristics of my voice to create an artistic representation of how I hear myself and how I want to be heard. That's what post-processing does. So, yes, I am re reviewing the MV88 Plus video kit. That's just the canvas. It's a great canvas. It's a fantastic canvas. It's an expensive canvas. It's got a lot of important qualities for a microphone that make it very versatile, but it would be meaningless without an artist working it. Now, I, I'm an artist. Am I, am I the greatest artist? No. <laughs> uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, I've got an album on iTunes. I am not going to link to it. I don't care if anyone actually ever hears it, but it's pretty good. It was produced pretty well. I, I wrote, performed, produced um, the whole thing. It was okay. Uh, but I'm not the best producer in the world, but I'm good enough. I'm okay. And I think when it comes to good enough audio, you know, you learn as much as you can, and then you don't worry about the rest, and you make great content uh, that people can listen to and enjoy. And that's what I'm trying to do uh, with the audio that I'm doing right now. I'm not worrying about the things that I can't control or the, the knowledge that I don't have. I, I pick up knowledge here and there as I go. I pick up equipment here and there as I go. But I've learned enough to be able to help someone at least get to the place where I am. And I hope that this talk on post-production helps you. So when you listen to a mic review, most mic reviews except mine, what you're hearing is a raw signal, and that's a signal that your audience is never going to hear from you. What you have to understand is you have to imagine the sound from that signal that you hear to the sound that you want. How much distance is there between the two? And there are ways to kind of figure that out. Uh, the sound of that microphone, would that work with your voice or against your voice? That's a, that's a good indicator as to whether you should use that mic as a starting point. But at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters about a microphone is what it will sound like when your audience hears it. This is the MV88 Plus. I'm David Johnson, and thank you so much for tuning in.